Hey everyone, God bless you and a blessed Ascension Day to all of you. Christ has ascended from earth to heaven. Thank you for tuning in. I have uh, a reflection that I've entitled, Do Not Relax. Do Not Relax. Before I expound on that for a bit, let me remind you that uh, this weekend, June 3rd to 5th, our annual Patristic Nectar Conference is going to be held. There's still time to sign up. You can go to our website, patristicnectar.org, and uh, sign up for this, what I think will be an extremely edifying uh, conference. Father Maximus Constus is our keynote, giving four addresses, and three more scholars will be presenting on Holy Orthodoxy, presenting the Christian faith. So I hope you can uh, tune in. Ascension is such a glorious, glorious day. You know the love of God is shown both in his descending and his ascending. And that work of Christ is depicted that way by the Holy Fathers in the Nicene Creed. The Creed is very simple, divided into four paragraphs. A paragraph about God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. A paragraph about our Lord Jesus Christ. A paragraph about the Holy Spirit. And a paragraph about the church and the mysteries of the church, the end times. In the second paragraph, dedicated to Jesus, which is the largest of all paragraphs, because there was so much heretical controversy uh, over the nature and work of Christ, it describes, the creed describes the saving work of our Savior, both as a descent, he was incarnate of the whole Virgin Mary, and was made man, was suffered, and was crucified and buried, and then having taken Christ down to the depths, down to under the earth, literally, uh, the creed reverses itself and shows that the love of God expressed in the gospel and sending his son to rescue us isn't just a descent, it is an immeasurable descent to measure the uncreated God becoming a human being without ceasing to be what he was is a measurement that no human being can make. That descent is also measured by, uh, is also explained and reversed in a glorious ascent. So the purpose of the descent was to come down to us and rescue us in our misery, to pick up fallen and diseased human nature, and to redeem people who are weighed down in the darkness of the shadow of death, bearing our iniquities and sorrows, and then to take us up. He did this magnificently in his resurrection from the dead, and 40 days after, which we're celebrating today, the Lord in his glorified humanity ascended from the Mount of Olives in front of his disciples and in the presence of the angelic host and took humanity for the first time through the atmospheric heavens, blazing a trail, blasting apart the devils and bringing humanity up to the very throne of God and placing the dust of the earth on the throne of the universe, planting humanity, staking our life there, our future there, so that we who are joined to Christ by faith can also follow him in that magnificent ascent. This is what true love does. True love bows low and assimilates the, the struggles of the beloved, and then the reason, the purpose of that bowing low is expressed by bringing an ascent of that fallen person up into uh, dignity, up into a better life, and in the case of the gospel, an unspeakably better life, a life which no eye has seen and no ear has heard and can only be understood by experience. Mm. I wish you happiness and great joy uh, during the celebration of Ascension. I heard recently from a number of uh, young men who just inspired my heart. They, they shared with me things that couldn't have made me happier. I heard a certain attitude, a certain beautiful disposition. I was talking with uh, a, a number of different young men. One of uh, the young men, the group of young men that I was dealing with, were sharing with me about a summer project that they're going to do. These are college-aged young men who were going to go to someplace else in the country and engage in a very intensive work project um, uh, in sales, even going door to door over large communities from morning till night, six days a week, intense. 
And I thought to myself, I asked them, why are they doing this? I said, why are you doing this? And this was their answer. They said, I couldn't think of anything I despised more, but would offer me such good long-term benefits. So I did it. I decided to do it. I thought to myself, yes, <laughs> that was manly. That was manly. I was so proud of these young men and am so proud of them. May God bless them as they go. I also was having another conversation with some young men. And these young men have been taking up a new habit the last few months. They have established some large, they, they obtained some large wine barrels and they have been filling them with ice. And after a long day, they, be, they come together at uh, one of their houses and they plunge themselves into this ice. And they stay in the ice five minutes, 10 minutes, I think they said up to 22 minutes now. In, this, in these freezing water tanks. And I thought to myself, hearing these two things, they did this for many verifiable and inspirational health benefits, as well as the psychological benefits of not uh, bowing to the flesh and its wishes for comfort. And I thought to myself, with young men thinking this way, pious, God-fearing lovers of God thinking this way, there is hope for the human race. If we had more young men thinking that way, America would have a future. It is the exact opposite of what this secular culture has nourished, this pampering, game-playing, screen-obsessed, dreaming but doing nothing, culture that has so destroyed uh, masculinity and has so destroyed the ambition of young men. Oh, this is great news. Hearing this made me my heart jump. It made me think of all of those great texts from Solomon. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leans only to poverty. He who works his land will have abundant food, but he who chases fantasies lacks judgment. He who works his land will have abundant fruit, but the one who chases after fantasies will have his fill of poverty. If you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? The laborer's appetite works for him. His hunger drives him on. Diligent hands rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. The sluggard craves and gets nothing but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. That's just a few. That's just a few. <laughs> yes, uh, you young men have that aggressive, zealous attitude towards responsibility and forcing yourself into the way of the good, and you'll be able to ascend to the virtues. You'll be able to learn to love and not hate. You'll be learned able to learn to forgive and to cover instead of respond. You'll learn how to master speech. There's no telling how much you could perfect love in your life and become great in the eyes of the Holy Trinity with that kind of ambition and zeal. This ties into my title, which is Do Not Relax. Do Not Relax. I've been studying the catechesis of St. John Chrysostom the last several weeks uh, in anticipation for a lecture that I'll be giving at our conference this weekend. And I was refreshed by some words that St. John Chrysostom offered about diligence and about attacking the temptation for ease. Let me read this. This is from his fifth catechesis where he describes how we should feel about labor. He says, During that season, the practice of fasting made you temperate, even in spite of yourselves. But now I am afraid, he's referring to Lent. During that season, the practice of fasting made you temperate, in spite of yourselves, but now I am afraid and I fear the freedom from this obligation 
and the relaxation which it produces. Human nature is inclined to nothing so harmful as ease. Are you hearing him? Our fallen human nature is inclined to nothing worse than the pursuit of ease. The very opposite of what I've been championing in these young men and praising in their ambitions and their virtues. What a word. How danger in, dangerous, in fact, ease is. And let me read another something. This is from the same instruction, just several pages later. He says, describing those who have been newly baptized, You were a slave and a captive and a rebel, and you have suddenly by baptism been exalted to the adoption of his sons. Therefore, do not relax. This is a direct word not only to the newly baptized, those who are newly illumined and have been received into the church this last Pascha. Congratulations to all of you who went through that sacred mystery. But to all of us, to all of us, the honors that we've been given by the love of God should compel us to great diligence. We should be wanting to be vigilant as a response to the honors that God has poured out upon us. In fact, in another catechesis, he describes how not to fall into the typical temptation of ease after Lent is over. In Lent, we become uh, spiritually concentrated. We fast with the support of all of our brothers and sisters. But when Pascha comes, the temptation is to, when we put away fasting, to allow our souls to lose the tension of commitment to God, which is a big mistake. Then we lose, in fact, the fruit that we have gained through the fast. Listen to St. John Chrysostom when he talks to the newly baptized about not losing these, tre these treasures. He talks about fasting when we're not fasting. What does that mean, fasting when we're not fasting? Let me read it to you. I told you that it was possible for one who is fasting not to fast. What does that mean? He means that it's possible to do the externals of fasting, but not actually to be conquering sin. That is an improper fast. I told you that it was possible for one who is fasting not to fast. Now I say that it is possible for one not fasting, those who are no longer in Lent, to fast. Perhaps you think I am speaking in riddles, but if you are seeking the solution, I shall lead you to it. How is it possible for one fasting not to fast? When he keeps away from food, but does not keep away from sin. How is it possible for one who is not fasting to fast? When he enjoys food, but does not taste sin. This is the encouragement that I have for you, dear ones. If we do this, if even outside of the fast of Great Lent and the other appointed fasts of the church, if when we're not fasting, we still fast from degradation. We still fast from anything that would displease God. When we still fast by not sinning, then all we're doing is showing the true fruits of the fast, in strengthening our souls to love God with our whole heart, our whole soul, our whole mind, and our whole strength. And in that sense, in the sense of holding on to God and loving him purely, we should never relax. Relaxation of the body and entertainment should only be used as a nurturer of our disposition and love for God. The fathers describe it as like an elastic. When you, when you have an elastic band and you're using it, you have to relax the band so it can re keep its constituency and continue to be used. If you make the tension so tight that it never is relaxed, then it will quickly lose its ability to hold anything tight at all. This is the same with us in the movement from the fast to the non-fasts, to the feasts, and then back to the fasts. That movement is special and arranged by the church to best nourish our souls. But even when we're rejoicing in the days of Pascha, like we have been for the last 40 days, and now in the sacred days of Ascension, and then in 10 days from now, 
in the gift of the Holy Spirit given at Pentecost when we stop fasting for another week after Pentecost and don't fast on principle. Let us learn to do what Chrysostom says and not relax our souls away from the love of God, but to learn to fast when we're not fasting. God be with you. Your prayers. Hey everyone, God bless you. Mark your calendar. June 3rd to 5th, our annual Patristic Nectar Conference. You are going to be thrilled at the lineup. Here it is. Holy Orthodoxy, presenting the Christian faith. Go to our website and you can find out there how to participate either in person here with us in Riverside. We hope you'll come or by live stream if you can't come here yourself. God be with you. Looking forward to seeing you.